Hi, I'm the rum. And I'm the wine. So we've been living here in Dublin for about two years now. And we've realized that we've taken on some very Pacific Dubliner habits. So today we're just going to discuss some of these habits. Yes, we love doing videos talking about Dublin, our life here as expats. So be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of these coming and more videos of our adventures when we do venture out into wider Ireland and other countries. Hi, I'm Julia, the wine. Hi, I'm Samora, the rum. We met in London, fell in love and moved to Ireland. We share tips on being an expat, travel, cultural experiences and living life efficiently. So one thing that made me feel immediately at home in Dublin is the love for tea. I've always loved tea, although I didn't drink like proper tea, tea until I went to the UK and lived there for a while. But I just love that people seem to love it as much here as I do. It's like in the office, there literally was one day where the socket in the kitchen didn't work. So you could spot all the Irish people and me walking around the office trying every socket to find one to get the kettle started so we could all have a morning tea. In the end we found one next to the printer, probably not the, the safest option, but we got our morning tea which was our priority. <laughs> so, happy days. Yeah, unfortunately I don't drink tea as much, so any coffee drinkers out there, comment so I don't <laughs> feel so alone in this video please. <laughs> so yeah, the only big decision I had to make here was when we first came here I didn't know any of the brands. And if you're from Ireland, you're probably, or lived here, you're probably aware. There seem to be two sides, it's berries versus lions. Yeah, leave Either me you out one of or this. The other. I don't drink tea, so any she's <laughs> over there, you can direct <laughs> anything based on what she's about to say to and her. There is only one right answer to that question. It's berries day. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You can hate on me in the comments all you want, but I tried lion's tea and I hated it. So I, I'm sticking with berries. When my office got like a huge 200 or even more hundreds of packs, huge carton full of berries tea, I was like, okay, th these are the employee benefits I need to stay at a company. Another tea related habit that I've picked up that seems to be very Dublin or Irish in general is that you always need to have your tea in a separate container next to the kettle, because otherwise the kettle, I guess, feels lonely. And I've started doing it, even though now I have this, and this. So it takes up more space, but without this, the kitchen just doesn't feel as, as cozy, so now, now we have both. Yeah, and you think this is all the tea? No, 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 no. <laughs> Off screen, just in this house, there are containers with tea different types of tea. I'm pretty sure she has stuff stashed at work as well. I have an entire drawer. Yeah, so <laughs> as you can see, I'm leaning into the camera. Ireland has done very well for her love of tea. Yeah, it's Thank enabling you. my addiction. <laughs> Thank you for turning my wife into an addict. Thank you. <laughs> for some reason, whenever it comes to the next topic, it's my turn to talk. I don't know if I'm being singled out because I come from the Caribbean. But one of the things that make us feel like we're pretty legit Dublin Dubliners now is that we've survived some of the most epic weather events in recent history. What are these weather events? Well, the first one I can remember was, was it Hurricane Ophelia? Yeah. Yeah. I An was, actual hurricane. I was quite annoyed because when they travel to another country, you don't expect things to follow you. I haven't had mosquitoes follow me, cockroaches, other sort of insects that live in hot climates, but no. I had to have a hurricane follow me the first few months I'm in Ireland. And I'm here thinking, okay, this is a weird conversation. I need to tell Julia how to prepare for a hurricane. A thing that I'm <laughs> used to, but not quite used to. So yeah, that was kind of cool. Um, if we have any footage of us walking through the park and the down power lines, I don't think power lines, but trees, oh, definitely. Yeah. Huge trees just whoosh, fell over. Sorry, it's my first, it was my first hurricane or strong winds or anything. So I was like, what is happening? 
Yes. The other event was lovingly called the Beast from the East. Yeah, I did not really think that I was going to experience snow in Ireland so quickly. Yeah, because um, people basically say it hardly snows here. Not only did I get snow for one day, but two, but especially the Beast from the East. It was kind of cool. We Kind of cool. It was very, very cool. <laughs> I think got a picture of someone building an igloo, all sorts of stuff, we were in the park. It was cool, so part of that history, feel proud. I remember we had to like work from home on our laptops. The there entire like, city was closed down, like public transport didn't work. Like I remember reading, they literally had to get the military to drive midwives to whoever was having a baby because there was no way to move around on the streets. Yeah, crazy. And the third event is I've experienced the Irish heat wave. Um, 23 degrees apparently is a heat wave. Don't, don't come for me in the comments. It was kind of funny because that's more of Barbados's like lowest temperature. I mean, back home it's winter. We're getting that now. And people are wearing jackets and you're feeling cold, etc. That. When that happened, I was here for long enough that walking, I think we were walking the Bray. One, yeah. one the walks, walking to Bray, and it's 25 degrees outside, and I'm like, I'm hot. This, this should not be happening. So, when 25 degrees feels hot to a Caribbean guy, I think I've lived here long enough to be like, hi, I'm acclimatizing way too much. When we go back to Barbados, we are going to roast. So in case you didn't know, I actually have a bachelor's in English and American studies and we had an entire lecture ser series on Irish film and TV. So I thought, I know, about, I know a lot about Ireland. We did the Irish movies that are really big, we did plays, we read books. But one thing, I do not understand how it was left out of our education because it's so vital to Irish TV history. <laughs> But I had to come here and have actually Italian colleagues recommend me to watch it and every, every Irish person in the room turned around and was like yes, go home and watch it today, you need to watch it. It's like required reading material before you move here. And that is Father Ted. I know it's technically actually a British TV series by the BBC but it's, it just represents the Irish sense of humour so beautifully. It's so much fun to watch. You might even end up identifying with one of the characters like I, like I did with Mrs. Yeah, Boyle. Yeah, uh, that was quite obvious considering the content of, you know, before. Yes, I get offered tea a lot. Very lot. Hi, would you like a cup of tea? Like, nine. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just TV. Got into Irish media and, you know, funny things so much that I've even started watching ads for Ireland on YouTube. I mean like Irish ads like the one for the leap card. I don't know if I can actually show it or talk about it or anything like that but it started off with like a school kid, bunch of laundry whatever and they're just posing in the front of the camera and it ends with like get some luxury into you. <laughs> I can't do the accent, sorry. But it's just a tone of voice, it's like shot like one of those expensive perfume ads. It's like get some luxury into you. It's so funny. And that's just one of them. There, 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 there are tons of them, but yeah. Um, I'm enjoying ads. You usually skip through ads, so I think. For the time you start watching ads for as entertainment, I, I think you're getting a bit more of the culture being absorbed into you. Into you. Yeah. <laughs> so the last thing we'll talk about today is the food. So, I think... Always we, my favorite topic. Everyone's favorite topic, of course. So one of the first things that we, the Irish culture taught us that we can't do without today is how to eat chips properly. We used to be savages that might eat chips plain or with ketchup, never mayonnaise. Sorry Germans. Yeah, no, that, that was not a thing and will never be a thing, <laughs> but vinegar. I remember we were celebrating something and then we went to one of his fish and chips establishments. Nobody sponsored us so I'm not saying any names. <laughs> also because we can't remember. <laughs> there is a lot of them. There is a lot of chippers. <laughs> yeah. And then 
as I said, we sat on tables and there was this bottle of vinegar. We're like, is this what we eat the chips with? We placed it on these chips and my goodness, we can't go back. There's no ketchup in this house. There's just vinegar, bottles of vinegar. It's like, I remember when our families came over and you know, they're like there, oh, there's some chips, like there's some sides of ketchup and whatever that we're like, no, you can take that away, grab the vinegar. Yes, thank you, Ireland, for teaching us vinegar of chips. Beautiful. <laughs> Man, do you see how beautiful it is today? Look, there's sun. Look at the sun, it's like how we'll be balanced. The lighting in this witch is <laughs> we're not used to this by sun. I look like a ghost. So that's all we got for you today. <laughs> yeah, um, those are pretty much some of the few things that we thought were really few, making us feel a bit more like a Dubliner after living here for two years. It's pretty interesting that how the longer you live in somewhere, the more pieces of the culture, the attitudes you pick up. And I think it's something that we'll continue to do in videos, just say like how quite different it is from home and also the similarities. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. I think we're probably going to do something cool like visit other neighborhoods in Dublin or new places and see just what it's like. So that's a cool thing. So if that's interesting to you, subscribe. There'll be a lot more. We still live in Ireland, so after we come back for a trip to Barbados, yeah, you're going to see a lot of Irish stuff. So, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. And until next time. Bye. Bis später.